Hey guys, today I want to talk about um, how to work around the VisionOS buttons. I mean, as you can see, uh, working with buttons on VisionOS can be a little bit tricky, as you can see here. You know, in iOS or iPadOS development, you can easily pass in your label view inside your uh, label closure, like so, here. And like 9 out of 10 times, it'll behave exactly as you want it. But in VisionOS, uh, your button will have to indicate whether it's getting focus, as well as implementing the shrink animation and the haptic sound uh, when tapped. So, as you can see, you can see this like a hover effect, like so, and shrinking, and it'll make haptic sound as well. Well, and the problem is that as you can see in the typical approach column here, which corresponds to this view right here. Um, VisionOS button property does not always respect the view that you pass in here. Although it still animates and ma uh, make the haptic sound as it should, it still looks awkward with this uh, capsuled enclosure. And in order to implement more native looking buttons, we will have to use button style. Okay, so then how do we do this? As you can see, all the buttons actually come with this uh, button style. Uh, where is it? There you go. And this button style is usually a struct that conforms to button style or primitive button style conformance. And we're just going to make our own button style here. So we, uh, so we can say uh, uh, custom button style, I guess. Custom button style. And then we're going to conform this to uh, primitive button style. And it'll complain because it says something about like a button, like a body or something like that. We can just ignore this and then start writing function of make body. And it'll, uh, it'll pass in this configuration. So what this configuration, uh, what this configuration is, basically everything that gets passed in in here. And notably, there are three different properties. First one will be the role. I think it gives you destructive and cancel. Let's see. Uh, yeah, none and cancel destructive. And we're not gonna actually care about this one, but what we want to care about is a trigger and the label. Trigger uh, corresponds to this action, whatever the, uh, that gets passed in here. And the label, you guessed it, whatever gets passed in this label closure. So what we're basically gonna do is to make another button inside this make body, pass in the trigger and the label, and then we're going to wrap that around using Swift UI's plain button style. So we can start writing button, action, and label. And you can just say this action, uh, action is configuration.trigger. And this label is basically configuration.label, just like so. And then, like I said, we can wrap this around with the button style. Plain button style. And this is it. Now, how we can use this is that we can just basically pass in as just, uh, just like the other, uh, what is it, um, button style. Uh, button style here, and then we can just initialize it in here, custom button style. But if you want to use um, like a dot custom button or something like that, then we can, uh, then we'll have to write another extension to primitive button style. And since basically everyone is using like uh, button style dot plain or destructive or bordered or something like that, we're going to follow that convention. So we can say extension Primitive button style where, where self equals to this custom button style we just created. And then static var, uh, let's just name it custom. And then we can just say dot init. That's it. And if you want to use this here, uh, where is that? Uh, so this buttons view button style at that should correspond to the last column in my uh, preview. So let's 
Let's use the same buttons as here and then let's see what ah, let's see what happens. I'm going to lazily copy and paste these. Oh, one more thing is that when you're uh, when you're implementing your own button style, make sure to use this system orange or like any any kind of like a system color because Apple made a little bit of a change on their uh, color property to like so basically these system colors would actually change the hue or I don't know what to say the, the dark ish like a thing depending on the surroundings out there. So uh, it is always a good idea to use uh, that system orange for some reason um, color dot system orange or color dot system green uh, doesn't work. It should work, but I'm just finding the way around right now. Anyway. Now that we have created our own button style, we can let's change the text. Some button style, give it a button style here. Dot custom. All right, looks good. And let's do the same thing on the bottom one. Okay, I made it bigger so we can actually see a little better here because there is going to be a little bit of a subtle difference. So as you can see, this one now respects the label's boundary. It's clipped to this uh, capsule shape and then uh, hovers nicely, animates nicely, and then it makes the other uh, tapping sound as well. But on the rounded rectangle one, as you can see, there's still this capsule shape over our rounded rectangle. And we can solve this by making another button style. And we're going to call it rounded button style. We can basically copy this one over here. And then make it like so. And now what we need to do in here is to implement a hover effect. And then we're going to clip shape both the label and the button itself. Now that we clip shaped it, we can actually discard this one right here and then change the button style to round it. And let's see how it looks. As you can see now, the hover effect has been implemented and it shrinks and goes back once you um, tap off of it. Animates nicely and make, uh, makes the tapping noise as well. And if you want to make another one for maybe a rectangular shape, just to, uh, like with a sharp corner, we can always do that as well. REC, rec button style, rectangular. And we just need to get rid of this uh, clip shaped modifier. Then we're going to test that out as well. Oh. Now we can test that out. There's no awkward shaping around it. It respects the view itself and then animates and make, uh, making a tapping noise as well. So this is how you would want to go about making uh, buttons for your Vision OS application. It is always a good idea to uh, make a whole bunch of um, custom button style because how many buttons are you, go are you going to be making? And having these kind of set convention throughout your app actually helps you organize your code a lot better and then it'll, uh, it'll look a lot better for user experience as well. So yeah, that was it for today. Hopefully it was, um, you know, useful and I'll see you in my next video then. Thank you.